Hey, we are the Sklar Brothers, and we love our kids, but we don't like them sometimes because yeah. they're mean to they're us. Mean to us. If you can tie it up while you go have brunch, it's not a kid. That's not, it's a, not kid. a kid. Like you know these thirsty uncles. <laughs> yes. I'm talking. They're single yes. guys. They're yes. childless. Yep. Funkles. Funkles. I said it yeah, on yeah. national television. Uncles. Were you competitive growing up, the two of you? I mean, it is such an emotional moment. I mean, she's yeah. screaming and, yeah. and yelling, and, and I'm we're like, cheering. They'll be fine. They'll yeah, be fine. yeah, they'll be fine. Rip some dirt on it. <laughs> like, imagine getting trolled all day long by someone and then having to drive that person to gymnastics. <laughs> 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 Terrible. Folks, welcome to I Love My Kid But. The parenting show that will make you feel less alone by telling you terrible stories of things we did. <laughs> <laughs> I'm here with Chris Garcia and Megan Gailey. My name is Kurt Brownoller. Megan, Chris, hi. Hi. How are you? I'm good. I'm feeling good. I'm excited about this. The Sklar brothers are here today. I'm so excited. My favorite. Twins. Twins. I love Twins. Them. It's the first time that we've had five people on the show. Oh it's going to be exciting. It's a lot of talking. It's going to be a lot of talking. <laughs> I'm just going to sit back. <laughs> I'm going to take this one off because we, as I was texting you guys, you didn't even ask me how I was because you know I'm not good. <laughs> yeah. Are you as like you had a terrible night last terrible. night? Terrible. Tell us about it. Well, we spent five hours at urgent care. Oh. Um, and I think we have chronic asthma I'm not so me sorry. little baby conrad yeah and um i did weaponize my white woman tears mm -hmm. for the good of my son <laughs> yes there it um, is who's not full white so that's actually kind of ally ship yeah um <laughs> You You're know, an ally. To I'm your an son. ally of my son. <laughs> I did have to, and then like when when we were walking to the car after five hours, I was like, CJ, like, thanks for keeping calm in there. And he was like, Listen, we both have our roles: good cop, bad cop. I was like, oh, No, I'm bad cop. <laughs> bad cop is the worst, and that's and that's who I am, and that's how I got two nebulizers. <laughs> I'll tell you something nice. We yeah. went to this concert last night, and it was Lauren and Kurt, and mm -hmm. then uh, Val and I went. We went together, and it was really fun, and Val paid you the nicest compliment that I look up to you so much that it's almost ridiculous that she said this, but she said she saw we went to go see Modest Mouse and the Pixies at Hollywood Bowl, and Kurt was dancing his ass off. He, he was feeling <laughs> the music. It was like he was, like, it was amazing. It was like you were, like, at a gospel church and feeling the power of the Lord. And Val looks over and she's like, he's like our son. But like in a nice way. She meant it in a nice way. She's like, because he is free and he's going for it like you. And he's also practical and responsible like me. And tall. And tall like me. And I'm like, I'm responsible. Uh, but it was really sweet. Wait, she, that was wild. Yeah, was she looked the, over and you were, you were so losing funny. your mind. You were losing your mind dancing. And she was like. And she was like very, uh, you know, she just like took it in. She's like, "Wow, oh, that's what a so, guy. that's such a." I'm, 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 I'm flattered, deeply, deeply flattered. It was a really thank you for the invitation. Yeah, it was really fun. It was, it really, was fun. It was really fun. Delight. Um, and we are, of course, talking today about competition. Mm. Um, Why didn't you see. invite me? <laughs> <laughs> Did you really want to see two white guys in their 40s scream? You know I didn't. Um, <laughs> you know I didn't. And even when I heard you guys like talking about it like last week, I was like, they know that I don't want to go to this. Um, <laughs> and I couldn't. I was at urgent care. You know, like it was like yeah. I had plans. <laughs> yeah. uh, so we're talking about competition. Sklar Brothers are going to be here. And we start the show off with a little thing we like to call circle time. And circle time is where we tell you a little story from our parenting lives make you feel a little less alone, all right? In your parenting lives. Now, Kurt, I believe you're up because you're the only one with two children. Yes. So if we were talking competition, it would be me competing with my son or Chris competing with Sonny. And both of these seem very possible. No, you've forgotten. You could also be competing with your partner for your child's love. Oh, oh yeah, yeah. We're doing that. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> That's just in the hair. We're doing that for sure. I, um, so Olive got uh, tie shoes, like uh, tie up shoes. And I remember the very first time we were like looking at the preschool to see if Olive would go there. I said, I only had one question, which was, do you teach kids how to tie their shoes? <laughs> and, and the woman looked at me like I was a fucking lunatic. <laughs> she was just like, I've never had that question before. And I was like, well, this is preschool. 
this is where they should learn to tie their shoes. I learned to tie my shoes in preschool, and it was honestly the only thing I learned in preschool <laughs> that was useful, I feel like, other than like, oh, I can ring a bell. Uh, and and so I was really hoping they're like, no, because all sh- kids' shoes have Velcro, is what she said. Mm. And Lauren was like, yeah, they're, they are That's Velcro. not true, though. It's not true. So now mm. Olive has these very adorable shoes that have like, they have wings on the side, and Whoa. every time she walks, like the wings light up. <gasps> oh, Whoa, awesome. I but love she can, light ups. But she can turn uh, turn off the light up function by like clicking a button. Wow. Um, they're really cool shoes, but they're tie. And uh, so in the morning we have to like tie her shoes, and I'm we're but every day I'm like giving the lesson. Here it is, crisscross over, make a bunny ear, wrap it around, bunny ear comes out, pokes out, hole, boom. Okay, you know that's how I tie mine, and people have told me that I tie them wrong. Wow, you know really? t- some people are making like two bunny ears at no, the same time. What? I don't, I don't know what those. People I had are. to like tie my shoes on them. camera for something, and like everyone was like <laughs> laughing behind my back. I'm like, what? And they're like, is that how you tie your shoes? I'm like. Yeah, yeah. That's how they taught me. What are you talking about? That's the way I tie my shoes. Yeah, they said I was slow. That was slow. They said I did it the slow way. What were you tying your shoes for on camera? Um, A Skechers ad, baby. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, porn. Porn. <laughs> Specifically, sketch your porn. It was like soup to nuts. Like they watch you get undressed and then redressed all the way to putting your shoes back on and then walking out. That sounds great, actually. <laughs> um, so, uh, so Olive is learning how to tie her shoes. She cannot tie them right now, and the mornings have a added stress level to them because it has to be like put on in a full tie, and then they come undone during the day. And then she has to have someone tie them. And I'm like, we that shouldn't be the responsibility of a teacher at her school to tie her shoes. She should be able to tie her own shoes. So we're always like trying to do it. And then we're sitting there. And so each time Olive's uh, shoes take longer. And then I've been asking Gus to put his shoes on, his socks and shoes on for, I don't know, two years. <laughs> <laughs> and um, And he's just like, he just looks at me and he's like, why don't you uh, go fuck yourself? <laughs> I have a better idea. So then I'm like working with Olive and then Gus just comes over and goes, uh, where's my shoes? And I'm like, uh, they're right there, buddy. And then he just, as I'm trying to do it, he walks over, puts his socks on, puts his shoes on, put them on the right feet, seals them up. And I was like, Gus, it's the first time he's just done it without being asked. I'm like, that's amazing. Thank you, buddy. And then he just walks right over Olive and goes, Looks like I can put my shoes on by myself. <gasps> and that just walks away. <laughs> and I was, like, blooded. I was like, oh, he did it just out of spite and competition. Wow. And it was the first time I saw like just him, like a th- he was at t- three at the time, just like just fully uh, make a choice out of competition with, with his your sister. Your move, big sis. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why don't you learn how to tie your shoes? <laughs> and, but he didn't tie his. Like no, in all he had defense, Velcro. He had like, Velcro. You got baby shoes, Gus. <laughs> but he was so proud. He had such a big smile yeah. on. And I was like, what a sweet guy. And then he came over like, go eat it, you know, and like walked away. Was Olive upset? Like, yeah. did it hurt her feelings? Oh, yeah. No, it didn't hurt her feelings. She was just like, oh, that's it. I'm going to learn how to tie these shoes. And it was like truly watching like competition happen. And I think that's a healthy competition. Yeah. Um, and I just go back and forth all the time with how much competition is good. I don't realize it, but I am a, a, I am a competitive person. But I don't like the feeling of being a competitive person. You know, it it doesn't feel good. And so I I oftentimes, I think myself, if there's so much competition and if there's so much pressure, I will like self-sabotage and just be like, I don't want to, I don't, yeah. I don't be want to be silly guy. This. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Um, and so I'll kick out of it. Yeah. I mean, I think that the competition between the two of them that you're describing sounds really natural because it wasn't yes. like you put either no, of them no, up no, to no, it. And no. like, I I have to imagine that's where you get into trouble when parents are like, well, you know, your brother got straight A's. Or like, what, like whatever the other kid yeah. excels at. Even if it's like, I mean, you... Even sometimes, like when I'm watching the Olympics, you know, and they're like siblings are there, and I'm like, Can I, I would be so proud, of course, but also <laughs> pissed if my brother was Michael Phelps. Like that'd be just too. <laughs> I would be like, oh, my brother's Michael Phelps, but also like, can you calm down? Like this yeah. is 
this is too much pressure yeah. that like what if I'm not the best at cursive yeah, or whatever yeah, yeah. I do I do wonder about the so are you friends with them are you friends with your brothers yeah, very you good are friends. you're very close okay yeah. good because that's another thing that I remember early on with at right after like Gus was kind of like coming into the world sometimes I would be like look Olive is doing it and Lauren was always like don't compare them don't mm. Don't show one doing another thing and saying you should do that as well because that's going to make them dislike each other. And I was like, oh, right. So let's we've had a hard focus yeah. on that of just making sure like we don't compare them. They're totally different kids um, because I really desperately want them to be good friends. Because if not, if they're not friends, then this was fucking worthless. <laughs> right. And all of it is like because I'm not going to be around for very much longer. Um, <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> Come on. Okay, let's have a competition. Who's going to die first? <laughs> I just want them to be with each other during the apocalypse. I think they'll be friends. Yeah, I hope I they'll be so. friends. Here, yeah. Here's to all of our children being lifelong friends and forming a commune out in the middle of the woods in Michigan. Well. <laughs> where there's fresh water. There's some wild stuff happening in Michigan. Well, we get to a good part of Michigan. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, well, I'm excited to ask uh, the Sklar Brothers children to also join our commune. They uh, went to Michigan. They love Michigan. I'm sure they Love do. it. Um, well, they'll be with us right after this. Okay, you heard today's guests earlier, uh, top of the show. Uh, they're one of the best twin brother comedy duos the around. Best. They well, are the best. Well, number one. You know what I'm going to say? Best white. Best white. They're the best <laughs> twin brother comedy duo. Yeah, white let's, twin. let's qualify it more. <laughs> They've hosted and starred in a ton of TV shows and movies, including my favorite Cheap Seats back in the day. Um, they also have a very funny podcast that I've been on many times that I love so much called Dumb People Town with uh, their co-host Daniel Van Kirk. Yes, yes. And uh, they have three stand-up specials and each have two kids. Please welcome to the show, Jason and Randy Sklar. Woo! Hi, everybody. Favorites. Welcome. Sports, Thank you. comedy, legend. Parenting. Parenting. Parenting legend. I legends. mean, we got a lot of stuff about parenting. <laughs> I know you do. It's just... That's I, like our whole new hour of stand-up. Is literally... Parent, I parenting think mine has as well. But yeah. good, and just in where we're at. Not afraid to be like, this is what's going on. I love your bit about uh, your friend who has one kid. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Tries to complain about anything, and you're like, um, That's me. you can't. No, you're allowed to complain. They're not around someone who she has more than around two. Yeah, more just than like that. we can't complain to anyone who's got three kids. Yeah. They're like, what are you even doing? Like, we got to play a zone defense, and you're yeah. just, you can still go man to man. And then our the this is about our kids, our friends who have just had pets. We have friends like yeah. I remember like Josh Adam Myers, love him. I'll call him out on this podcast. And I was like, we're like, hey, we're hey, going to a drink after the show. You want to come with us? No, nah, man, I, I gotta, gotta get, get home and let the dog out. <laughs> like he's so it's my baby. He's so <laughs> riddled with like responsibility. He's like it's like raising a kid. We're like, we're like is, is, it? It? <laughs> is it? Is it? Is it? But then like, when you have two, you're like, it what kind of is, is when you no. just have one. I was like, Josh, <laughs> if you can tie it up while you go have. <laughs> Brunch. It's not a kid. That's not, not a kid. That's not a kid. That's not a kid. So <sighs> my mom met him one time and was like, "Wow, he really loves his dog." Uh, like, I know. <laughs> And he does, and, and, and I'm not and denying I that. Is, 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 like, I yeah. get it. I have dogs, too. I understand. But I if it, it runs away and two weeks later you turn to your partner and say, let's just get another one and call it the same name. name. Not, <laughs> that is not a not child. A, that is not what we do with children. So we were earlier talking about competition um, because my kids uh, just started recently competing, mm -hmm. uh, specifically around shoe tying. I was going to say, but, for your love. <laughs> <laughs> it's for my love. In a sense. And I'm withholding. I withhold a lot. Good, good. good. You're doing what you should solid do. parenting. Teach them how to act in a relationship. <laughs> yeah. Um, do your kids like so? I mean, were, did, were you competitive growing up, the two of you? So we weren't. Actually, we were not. We learned was, very early on yeah. to work together. We learned that we said someday, eventually, we'll work together at something where we'll have the opportunity to split the money. <laughs> um, and so we need to work together because God forbid. No, but there we... are other twins that I think we saw in other twins, this some competitor. There were the Ziegelman twins who always passed us down their sport coats. They we always got us. the Ziegelman sport coats. It's like, <laughs> our mom's like, we got to go to the yeah, Ziegelman's, yeah, Ziegelman's You guys got oh new, new sport coats. So like, they grew out of them. We, <laughs> we got, got them. <laughs> Ziegelman sport coats. Not even just other twins, other Jewish twins. <laughs> Walk over there and walk back in the Ziegelman sport coat. I need to see the way it looks behind you and I need to see it. Put the Ziegelman sport coats on and walk. And so like anytime there's competition, we, 
it we had a weird thing. This is like very sweet. I was thinking about this. We were we were alternative comics by the age of three. Right. <laughs> Anytime like, we saw anyone doing this anything, is hacky, that's we hacky. gotta go in a different direction. No, but we were hard on each other, like really hard on each other, the way you would be hard on yourself. If you uh-huh. kind of are you're like, you know how you can be hard on yourself in a way that no critic. one else can? Yes. You're the worst critic. So right. we, we were on the, we play baseball in high school, play baseball for our high school team. And there was a time where I was in center field and Randy was pitching. And I was just, he was throwing balls. He wasn't throwing <laughs> strikes. Like I was people. yelling at him. It's like, you, you throw suck. a pitch. I'm like, worst. you're ruining you're literally the game the for worst. the team. I'm going, going on. So I walk two guys in. When the guy gets around to second base, the guy on the other team, as he's yelling at me as I throw another ball, he turns to Jason and is like, give Give him him a break. break. (laughs) Calm down on him. (laughs) The other team is like, stop. You got to stop. And I'm like, you don't understand. Like it's people like, wouldn't play basketball if we were on the same team. Yeah, we could play we so, against you. That's what was so crazy. We were worse when we were on the same team because we were so hard on each other that no oh. one could stand it. When we were on opposite teams, it was fine. Yeah, it was fine. It was like the competition part was fine. It was like very odd. It's a very odd. It's almost like having that voice inside your head just externalized and walking yeah. around. Yeah, yeah. Like yeah. You are, and people yeah. are like, that, keep it inside your brain. It it's should, too much. That's an inside voice. Yeah, yeah, right. Yeah. right. No, I mean, it's funny. We just don't have that gene inside of us which I'm very grateful for actually yeah. but my kids are too far apart yeah, give in us age the, give us the ages so I have a but I will say this we I have a nine and a half year old girl and I have a 14 and a half year old son mm-hmm. and he's like off in another stratosphere I like that you're still doing halves at 14 yeah. and a half <laughs> well he's almost there he's almost 15 she's okay. basically 10 in December she'll be 10 and he'll be 15 he's 320 so. months yeah <laughs> <laughs> That thing when like a parent's like, she's 27 months. And you're like, just say two, you two, dumb yeah. bitch. Don't, what? Don't make me do math. Why? So so my, so my they're so far apart that they don't have things to compete right. with. Really, they just, I want them to be doing the same thing for five minutes ever so that they can uh-huh. actually be around. But so the other day I took them out golfing because my daughter's getting into golf, which is actually really cool. My son is a natural athlete and he was very good at golf, but he doesn't do it anymore. Skateboarding, basketball, he does all that stuff. So- I got him to come with me and my mom. Which is a minor miracle. It's a miracle. At 15, it's a miracle to get him to come and spend it's an hour. Cutting into his masturbating time. It really is. <laughs> it's really, I'm like, like, look at this schedule, father. <laughs> yes. I, I am could booked pinch, I could solid. Pinch, I have 30 I minutes. Have 30 I'm like, how do you masturbate five reload. times in 20? How do you reload? All right, so he he's like, he comes with us. Not <laughs> to he golf. goes to the golf course. He goes course. to the golf course with us. We go out and my daughter is like, she's been taking lessons and she's actually really good. And so he is getting super frustrated because like sometimes he's actually really good, but he hit a couple errant shots. He's like banging his club. I mean, you can't bang your clubs. But in my heart, I'm like, that's a little, little competition. A little, yeah. a little she's good. Yeah, sure. She's good at this thing. And he has always been the athlete right. in the family. And she is athletic too. But like, this is a moment where she was really kind of outplaying him a little bit. And he, I could feel it in him even though he did she feel so proud she felt super proud and she loved it and her proudest moment was to be like hey maybe you should keep your head down (gasps) like she gave him like a note advice she gave him like a note and he was like i know what to do and i'm like she's got lessons recently like then it's my job to come in and like soften what she says make him feel good about what he does you're like the producer who takes the network notes and gives it to to make it palatable (laughs) for the writers yeah yeah yeah. and and then at the end what was so great was that he got a birdie on a hole he like almost well, got a hole in one and wow. she was like jumping up and down and hugging him and like really excited and so like that moment brought them together and at the uh, end he's like I want to do this again with her with us and I'm like that's awesome do we're doing it yeah. we're doing it oh, um, that's whenever so you want great. I'm there Big and Randy what about you what so are your my kids, kids are two years apart two years and two months much closer they're very close they're very different people ages so, 18 and 16 okay. so the 18 year old is a freshman at college Congratulations. And thank you. She's, I love it. She's and she's going to your University of Michigan. Oh, she's like dream. living in our dorm that we oh, That's crazy. When to. I saw that she got in, I teared up. Oh my it's God. like a great. Huge. My brother and sister and mother in law all went there as to well. To Michigan? Oh, wow. Yeah. That's yeah. incredible. Yeah, so place. we, we took a video of her like finding yeah. out that she got in, and we sh- there's this video, and we were, we were doing like a two man show about like parenting. One night we showed the video on there, and 
Jason's joke, which is, I mean, it is such an emotional moment. I mean, she's yeah. screaming and, yeah. and yelling, and, and I'm we're like, cheering. And I was like, and that was the second take. That's how good of an actor <laughs> she is. She's so good. She we got her to up. get back into the head. Let's go back to one and let's do it one more <laughs> time. Let's check the gate. So uh, she, she, amazing. And she's like us. Like, she auditioned for comedy company which is the sketch comedy group at Michigan that like John Glazer and Matt uh-huh. Price and Mike Blight and all these great people were in this and have been in throughout the years and she got in wow. she just got freshman. in wow. it's a freshman like 50 people auditioned 13 people got callbacks 4 people got in out Whoa. of like all years yeah. and she got in that's so. her like competition I think in her it's like that auditioning thing is like right. a competition. So she, so as far as competition goes that, there, there isn't a ton between them because they're so different so she's like as if she she could have been born at any time. Okay, when I was 50, when we turned 50, we're 51 now, almost 52. I My friends got me an hour conversation with a psychic in yeah. in uh, Phoenix. Cool. I call this woman up in and Phoenix. I'm like, <laughs> she's not even here. I call her up. She lives in the psychic district. Oh <laughs> like, we guys, live she in lives the psychic headquarters yeah, in the yeah. world. Old psychic like, town. Gotta outsource to Phoenix. So, like I spent the first 15 minutes of the call being like, listen, I don't believe in any of this stuff. <laughs> However, I have a very open mind. If you blow my mind, like I will give it up for that. I'm not going to yeah. deny it to fit my narrative. So she told me about my daughter. She's like, okay, what's your daughter's name? I said, do you have any kids? I said, yeah, two daughters. Give me the oldest one's name. I said, Daisy. She's like, okay. And, and apparently this is her process. <laughs> There are three. Daisy, s- Daisy, quite amazing. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. That's literally. Do you, have you You're spoken like, to her? She yeah, is amazing. Her. You are psychic. She's, Lisa she's a psychic from, Phoenix? from Arizona. Okay, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so she like speaks to three spirits that she can't see. Just says the name, and then they give her information that she's like, "I'm not asking for it. I'm just telling you okay. what comes through." Okay. It's very convincing, kind of the way she said. Yeah. It. But she said. Your daughter, without knowing anything about her, like there's no there's no human way. By the way, our social media is we share together. I don't have my own. Yes. Right. So like she would have to do weird digging to get information. And there isn't a lot of stuff about our kids on there. She said, your oldest daughter, you were in a life prior with her. You were best friends in this life that you had prior. You were both circus performers together. And... <laughs> And you loved her so much, you were so close with her, that you vowed to pull her into another life with you. And you did it this way through your kid. So I was like, all right, uh, you know, some of the general stuff I don't believe, but I said, this is so, this is what I tell people. Like if she was around during our, our, when we were kids, we would have been best friends with her. Wow. So she's that kid. What kind of circus performing? I don't know. Fire don't know breathing. We Maybe. Was she the lady with the beard? Maybe. She no. You're like, this is sick. So you gotta yeah. come with I me know, I gotta find out. Others. I should have more information. <laughs> But uh, and then and then my sixteen year old is like a one hundred percent product of kids right now sixteen <laughs> on the tip of everything, just on the edge of you know, she's literally a complete like product of what is going on right now. So very different, and their differences allow them not to be in competition with each right, other, which right, is amazing. Right. Yeah. There is a little right. bit of your a- Your eldest is like just throwing knives, swallowing fire. <laughs> right. Your 16 year old is a bot. Has a computer. Been, shopping, <laughs> been shopping at Goodwill on TikTok and like doing- But right, you so. hear 18 and 16 year old daughters. I have nieces that are three years apart and it's like, oh, they're going to murder each other. You know, like it's going to be like, I'm going to cut your hair in my sleep right. or like whatever. Or they're going to yeah. hate you. Or they or hate us. Like I, we talk about this in our act. I say, what is it like living with two teenage daughters? <laughs> it's like living with your two worst internet trolls ever. <laughs> like you can't block them. You can't <laughs> mute them. It's like, imagine getting trolled all day long by someone and then having to drive that person to gymnastics. <laughs> <laughs> Terrible, <laughs> horrible, awful. But they love each other. There is a little bit of not a competition, but comedy in our family, as yeah. I'm sure you yeah. guys, is a currency in our family. Meaning, yeah. if you can make someone laugh, like you all get, is forgiven. It's yeah. all you get is out forgiven. Of, you get out of everything for every free. lot. For, yeah. And as it, your kids will get older, you will see. Like they'll see like, that don't. you'll place so much weight on, without you even knowing about it. You place so much weight on. So older one is like <laughs> really, really funny yeah. in so many ways that like we are all funny. The young one is really funny too, but in like different ways. And she, for a, like a small period of time, like when the 
older one was just about to leave the house. The younger one was saying, Georgia was saying so much funny stuff Mm -hmm. and it was killing us. And the older one is like, do you still think I'm funny? And I was like, yes, yes. But your sister is crushing it right now. She's on like an insane run. She just roasted your mom so hard. The the roasting is unbelievable. So my youngest daughter, we were on like a vacation. We were all sitting around. Nice, things are going well. And she's like, I want to do, let's do impressions of each other. And I'm like, this is going to start funny and it's going to get bad so fast. They do this on Housewives sometimes and it always ends terribly. It's horrible. It just uh, goes to a place where someone crosses the line. I'm like, no. She's like, come on. I'm like, all right, fine. Do me. Because I'm like, I know I can take it. I've been roasted before. And she's like, no, you broke your leg. Just walk it off and put a bandaid on it. You'll be fine. I'm like, what? Like, I don't care about your good advice. It would like immediately get so. And she was being super funny. And then my son was joining in and they were being funny. And I was like, do I let them be super funny and then let this destroy the whole whole vacation? Because it is really funny. It is really funny. I'm like, I can take it. I'm like, I don't know if my wife can take how mean they're about to be. But like, and they got so mean. And then I got mean back to them. And it was really great. It was super. I loved it. But there was competition in that moment of like, who can get the biggest burn? That was the only time I really saw them like kind of uh-huh. going at each other and they when they did each other that was super when they like both did their roasted impressions of roasted so it was good. so fun oh man uh, so we do a thing every uh, show where we give you guys the uh, the struggle wand we found it in the trash um, and it's a moment for <laughs> either or both of you to uh, just discuss anything that you're struggling with as a parent right now you take this first and yeah. then I will uh, so I would say that I Definitely struggling with my teenager, getting him to care about the things that he's doing the way that like we did, which I don't think is fair. But I but I still feel that way. I like like the way I did and the way Randy did, which we were similar, was that we cared so much about everything we did that it we outperformed our abilities always. That was just our thing. We were okay athletes, but we made varsity teams because we we worked harder than everybody else we were not the funniest comics but we kept doing it forever until we got better and like that's like ingrained in our dna he is talented and he is smart and he is a great athlete but at times i'm like i don't know how to not be like mean to him about like effort because i'm like that's the difference between you being an a plus student and a b plus a minus student and like I sound like an old person when I say yeah. it. I try to be funny about it, but I end up just being mean and I'm struggling with that so much. Like yeah. my wife is like, you're being so mean. And I'm like, I, I don't know how to not be mean about this because it, you should have heard what the kids roasted you. <laughs> oh shit. <laughs> yeah, I was like, yeah, they roasted both of us. Anyway, that's what I'm struggling. That's struggling. Okay. For me, this is, is cause each kid is, you got to use a different set of things to help motivate them different tools to help motivate them and different tools to help them succeed and so right now i am struggling with just letting the 16 year old do all of the stuff on her own like i we don't tell her have we don't ask her have you done your homework we don't do she goes on her own schedule sometimes we'll be up till three in the morning and then wake up at like six and then i mean she's just probably doing damage to herself in this way, but I kind of want her to make the, so you want to step in and be like, hey, don't do that. If I were you, I'd get home and do all your homework now and then just screw around it. And I like, don't, yeah. don't keep this. And like last night, she fell asleep and had all this homework to do this morning. I woke Ugh. her up at seven in the morning and she's like rushing and freaking out. And instead of me, like I have was struggling with just like, don't say anything. <laughs> Just support her. Just be like, whatever. I mean, you'll do as well as you do. This is a lesson learned, but I didn't even say that. I was like, you'll get it done. Yeah. So it's struggling with just be like, she's got to find this on her own. And me pushing it might get her there sooner, but there might be resentment between her and me. And so I would rather she find this thing out on her own and just release and don't care about She's great. Great student has to work really hard, but I'm like, just let her make yeah. these mistakes, and maybe next time, because she internalizes lessons better even than the older one. 
when she screws up. So uh-huh. I'm like, I don't think she's going to do this again. Right. So it's not like you have to harp on it. It's just, you just have to like give her the space to make the realization. I mean, but we own. are all as comics, we record our sets. We yeah. look back over, what did I do wrong? How could I get this better? And then you're just micromanaging yourself all the time. Yeah. How can I make this better? How can I rewrite this script and make it better? And the, and as a result, you are in that mode all the time. So I struggle with that. That's the really cool thing about that, and I admire that so much. It's so hard not to jump in mm-hmm. and totally. do it like for, and use the lessons that you've learned in life and just like impose it on them. Mm-hmm. But it's so beautiful to have the patience and also the trust in her that she's going to figure it out. I don't think you would have done this if you didn't completely trust that she's going to figure it out. And I think it's really like I just I feel like I just learned something. <laughs> and it's really um it's very admirable. Admirable, and, and it's admiral. <laughs> and it's admiral. It is like an admiral. Is, no, but you're right. Chill. You're, you're right. right. It's, it's thank you. So that thank you, and I that is said thank you for his compliment. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you accepting my compliment? Because you weren't being nice enough I to him. You just made you. fun of his. I said the word admiral that Chris here. said, said instead of saying thank Chris. you. <laughs> the point is, and I think we can all agree with this. And as they get older, to you guys. If you're if you're smart about how you interact yeah. with it, you learn a lot about yourself. And I'll just say this about and I'll put and the I have struggle one, and one I have down. One more thing to say about but that. But the too. the I would sometimes, especially when my kids were like very younger and more willful, and you couldn't really get into fights with them over like stupid stuff. I secretly loved the fight, not because I liked getting in fights with my kids. I hated that. I hated the conflict because we're not like, I don't like that. I don't love like yelling at people. It's just not who we are. But you get into it with your kids in a way that like you just, people don't get into it. But what I love is the reconciliation because I know that if we're getting into a fight now, there'll come a certain point in time where they'll be like, I'm sorry. Or you'll say, I'm sorry. And then they'll say they're sorry. And like that reconciliation is like scratching the best itch Uh ever. And I would never do that. Would you ever do that with your friends? You get into a huge fight with your friend. You're like, see you later. I'm not talking to this person for six months. months. (laughs) Like, do I need to talk to this person? But meanwhile, like you get into a fight with your kid, then you got to lay in bed with them and help them go to sleep. Yeah, yeah. You got to get to the other side you of the fight. You got to get to the end of the sitcom. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yes. Get to the end of the sitcom. You got to get to the end of the fight on the other side of it so quickly. Do so. you think that being a twin is that how you learned it? Is that I, part of it? Yes, I think we That's got great. it. We learned to get over conflict super, super fast because we what are, are going to live with like yeah. this thing between us <laughs> in our house. Yeah. Yeah. His room is right across the hall so from me. So bad. So we would just go yeah. deep. We would we'd fight, fight, fight really intensely, and then come away from it and be like, okay, all right, let's move on, relax. But I would say this to as as parents of older kids so i would talk to you guys the way that we talk to people who i'm sure you have like parents friends who are like so and so wants to get into comedy we have a phone yeah, conversation right, right, right. With so what i what we used to say is get up and do it all the time and da, 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 da. now i say look you need to redefine your your definition of success to make it super wide so that you can actually succeed so instead of saying i want to make it as a comedian i want to be a star i want to have a sitcom i want to do all these massive things that doesn't doesn't happen for anyone except for like 0.0% just say i'd like to get paid for being creative yeah. that is yeah. such a better bar for you to cross yeah. so your work isn't isn't just the work you have to work on your how you personally define success. That's like a whole other job that That's you need great. to start That's working so on right smart. now. So for parenting older kids, it's a totally different thing. Cause when they're little, you're just like, I gotta teach them right and wrong. And I gotta step in when they're being dicks. Yeah. And I gotta like yeah. help this keep thing. Them keep, keep them alive. Keep them alive. <laughs> keep them off the pole. Keep them, you know, keep <laughs> them alive. Keep them from doing bad things to other people. Pe- mm-hmm. Keep them from being disrespectful, teaching them in the moment, all that stuff. But then as you get older, you're just like, it becomes this different thing. You're like, I need to understand, I need to step back and understand what I'm doing here first before I jump in and actually do something. It's right, a lot like more what, thinking. What is the, what is, you, ha- you have to define your idea of success for that interaction of how, of that And for that the moment. whole moment yeah. of these years. And of here's like, the dirty little secret, I'll put a button on this, I'll put a button on you, is that you're gonna screw up. Everybody, yeah. every parent yeah. always screws up. Oh, a yeah. million we're very, times. We're very aware. familiar with that already. <laughs> the best part about it is when your kids are old enough to appreciate this, you apologize yes. to them. Most some people be like, "What are you apologizing to your kids for? They're your kids. You do what you want with your no. kids." No, you apologize to them to teach them how to apologize yes. when they're in a relationship, and also to take responsibility. To me. Right? <laughs> 
You know, it's really nice. We, sometimes in our individual lives, we'll talk to a, a, a dad that's like a veteran. You know, we're new dads and a new mom. And you'll talk to like a veteran parent and they're kind of like hardened and they have they just like know all the answers. And it's kind of <laughs> kind of a bummer. <laughs> mm-hmm. And you guys are so it, it feels Still like open, a, yeah, open you don't know and everything. it feels um, it's been very delightful. And it feels like you're imparting wisdom to us in a way that people that have been dads for 20 years have been like, ah, oh, whatever. You yeah. just do this and that. Yeah, they'll be it's fine. Really, they'll yeah, be fine. yeah, they'll be fine. Rub some, yeah. it, yeah. Rub some dirt it on it. Rub some dirt on it. It is. Treat. It was know. a real treat and it was really nice to to get some of that wisdom and now we're just going to shit all over it by doing <laughs> time <laughs> out. Oh, okay? yeah. Time out. So we'll be right back with some time outs. Uh, all right, timeouts. What we love to do is we one thing that we are done with. We put it in timeout. We'll go first, and then it's, a, it's up to, for Perfect. you, Chris, Megan. Who wants to go to timeout first? I can go first. Sounds I'd like good. to say um, timeout to chin hair. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's some things that happen to your body when you're pregnant: the little baby hairs, the chin hairs, and then you go, "Oh, it'll it'll stop when I'm pregnant." <laughs> nope. The chin hair is almost worse now, and I have less time to be scouring. I I think I've actually reached the age where I am with friends, mm-hmm. and I'll be looking at their chins like I gotta let her know. Like, oh my <laughs> god! Like food on the side yeah, of someone's we're face. All just You're like, the chin uh, hair messenger. <laughs> we're just all hairy chin. Oh, Megan, our producer, she just had a baby. Her chin is clear. Clear, clean, Good for smooth. You. <laughs> envious. Yeah, you gotta find out what's going on. I How's know, she I doing it, to. Chris? Uh, I'm going to put uncles that are a little too proud on Instagram. Like, you know these thirsty uncles? <laughs> yes, I'm talking, yes. they're single yeah. guys, they're yes. childless. Yep. Uh, you know, uh, Funkles. Funkles. I said it yeah, on yeah. national television. Funkles. Fuck uncles. Okay. <laughs> but it just feels like, you know, when uncles make a birth announcement or something, yeah. and they'll oh, be like, God. thank you to Thatcher for making me an uncle. Like, it's just so, it feels like such... Stolen valor out of your jurisdiction. Yeah, it's yeah. like my dad uh, was an immigrant uh, man, loved America, very patriotic, mm-hmm. so much that he would wear like um military clothes. <laughs> like he You're would like, wear Did like you a sir. Yeah, yeah, sir. <laughs> like a black one of those black trucker hats that has the gold <laughs> stuff, and he would say like USS Maryland or whatever. <laughs> he just love. And if you didn't stand Don't for the national you. anthem at like a Dodger game, you'd be like, "What's wrong with your legs? Are they communists?" Like he would like freak out. <laughs> On people, but he had this sweater. He had what that said, "Proud Veteran," yeah. you know. He and I'm did. like, "Dad, that's yeah, just dad. Pokey. <laughs> Don't, that's too much, you know. You did not, you did not serve. Like you weren't in war." And that's how I feel about these funkles the online. Uncles. You're like, you do not, Great. you do not to get. To I'm it. a, I'm a, I'm an uncle, 17 times over. And I've never posted about it. Good on you. <laughs> Good on you. Thank you for your service. You don't want to. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, I'm going to put a time out. I'm going to put, um, and this is kind of related to what we we're talking about, interestingly, uh, a time out to preventing hard things. Um, and I feel like so much of the early years is preventing struggles and preventing hard times. Mm-hmm. And now hard times are really important, but I still find myself trying to prevent them. Meaning like just this last uh, weekend, it was Gus's birthday. He's four, Olive six. And Olive, firstborn, definitely has like, if if the day isn't about her, she's like, why isn't it? (laughs) And when a day is about Gus, he's like, oh, the day is about me? Do you know what I mean? Like you see that big difference of first, second born. And so Gus was having a really nice day. He was getting some presents and stuff like that. And uh, and Olive was just flipping out about it. <laughs> and it was a moment where it's just like, this is good for you. Yes. Like Lauren and I both were like, we got to end. Like, if you want to be upset, it's OK. Go to your room and you can be upset. We'll come and talk to you later. Uh, but you, you're not allowed to ruin this for Gus because this is his birthday. And when you have your birthday, it'll be the exact same rules for Gus. And so we had her like, she had a kind of a meltdown. She went into her room, had the meltdown. We waited for it to calm down and then like went in and spoke to her about it. Mm-hmm. But she was able to process it and then come out of it. And I'm sure she's still going to do it a thousand more times. But like that idea of like, don't, don't keep them from having hard things happen or bad things happen, even though it results in a meltdown. Like those meltdowns Agreed. are valuable, I think. Agreed. So yeah. agree. Uh, I'm going to put a timeout. You guys don't have this yet, but you will. Uh, on 
getting emails from the schools that your kids are in about assignments that have been turned in and knowing their grades like in an up to minute like you remember when ESPN so like gave you like scores up to the minute like <laughs> so I know to a percentage point like when my son when he's got like an 89.6 uh. or it switched to a 90 <laughs> but, oh but then now it's down to an 87 because he didn't turn this it's thing like in the stock market it's like oh, yeah so stressful Do you ever follow an- the stock market every five minutes and I'm like dude this is too much so yeah. I want to put that in a timeout because oh, hell yeah we know too much now and yeah. it's also that's way too much stress like when we got a report card it was at the end it was Four times a year, yeah. and it was one letter, and that's it. it was that's like, it. There you you go. got a letter, and like so now it's like almost like getting the final score of the game Ooh. when it's in the first quarter, and no. you're down by ten. So that's super stressful. I mean, that I mean, Randy can. I'm sure he is. I'm it. gonna put in a timeout my 16 year old's eye rolls. Oh, they yeah. are insane. Big, big like ones. I insane. I brought her breakfast up to her room. Mm-hmm. I knew she was like in in a world of hurt this morning. Made the breakfast. Cut the uh, the little breakfast sandwich, put it upstairs, and put it up there. And I like put it down. She just like took a look at whatever fruit I put on there and like gave me an eye roll. I was like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It was as if I had like taken and like taken both the dog's shit and put it on a plate <laughs> and then set that in front of her. That's what I was like. I'm sorry. I, I didn't hear a thank you for all of this oh. and what this is. But like the eye roll is, t- it's way too much. It is maybe, it's, it's the, most, it's the most terrible nonverbal thing that anyone can do yes. to someone. It is like so dismissive. The, uh, she, uh, like, uh, uh, <laughs> don't do it. I'm putting that in timeout. No way. That goes away. Anytime your eyes start to go up, no. That's it. Put sunglasses on. I want to see it. I'm an eye roller and I don't even know that I'm doing it. Like, that's yeah. what CJ's like, it's don't bad. roll your eyes. I'm like, I didn't roll my eyes. And he's oh like, God. I'll, we need to rewind roll the, the tape. tape. Olive, rewind the tape. Olive was rolling her eyes before she knew what rolling her eyes yeah, was. And yeah. I was like, don't roll your eyes at me. And she's like, what is that? And I was like, when you go like this, she's like, I don't do that. She's like, I don't do that. <laughs> And I was like, you're fine. You're doing it now. <laughs> you're so good at it. Yeah. Uh, guys, w- plug, plug, plug away. So, okay. yeah, we have a podcast called Dumb People Town that we do with Dana Van Kirk. We also have a Patreon, uh, Sklar Brothers Patreon, where we do new episodes of our old classic cult show, Cheap Seats. It's so funny. Uh, yeah. Really fun. And then also we do a lot of live dates coming yeah. out. We have a lot of stuff. Supersklars.com has all of our dates. Um, well, thank you guys for so much for being here. That was really, that was, that was a really great episode. Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Two delightful Aren't dads. Aren't they the best? They were awesome. They yeah. were so funny and so like kind and sweet. It's awesome. Yeah. Uh, they um I I hope I don't think they would be upset if I said like they feel like uncles to me. You know, like true. And I know we're out on uncles, um, <laughs> but like they're the good ones. Yeah. Of like yeah, I love them. Like being yeah. their kid seems like it'd be like pretty cool. Yeah. Um, and remember, guys, if you're enjoying this show at all, we're a brand new podcast. So if you could uh, do us this favor, which would be uh, go on wherever you're listening to this and rate and review us. It really, really does help, even though it seems so stupid and dorky. Um, and and We'll read it. Yeah. We will read it. So if you have anything to say to us, that's the way to say it to and us. And you get to make a little name. Yeah. It's almost like AOL days again. Yeah. You yeah. know, you can put the last four digits of your childhood home phone in there. <laughs> Abercrombie chick, 626. <laughs> and if you are uh, if you want to call in with your own Circle Time story to tell us, you can by dialing 424-570-KIDS. That's 424-570-KIDS. Or you can email us at ilovemykid at wondery.com. Um, and please make sure to start it with I Love My Kid But. And if you do, maybe we'll use it on the podcast just like this. I love my kid, but it's Monday. I woke up this morning getting my kid ready for school and myself and noticed him scratching his adorable, cute little head. And Uh, I check it out, and it's head life. No. Fuck my life. So on top of that, we live in Tennessee. It's 100 degrees, and the AC unit went out. So it's 86 degrees in our house. (gasps) My kid oh. woke up with head lice. He's screaming. We all went to get treated at the lice clinic, which is a thing you don't know about until you have a kid with head lice. <laughs> and we all got treated, and it was $300. <gasps> oh, my goodness. So it's been a day. Oh, I'm on dear. margarita number two. 
Yes. And yes. load of laundry number 10. Oh. And we're life free, but it is still hot as fuck in here. And we'll get through this. You guys are awesome, and I love the podcast, and we're all in this together. Oh, Yay. that's so sweet. We are. But should we open a lice treatment center? <laughs> <laughs> no, those exist. Oh, the lice, lice treatment center. Oh, yeah. I've seen vans here where they, like, come pull up to your house and do oh, your wow. entire house. That's crazy. Yeah. I mean, my initial was like, shave his head. <laughs> 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 oh. That was going to be my go-to. So it's nice to know that there's a clinic you can yeah. use. Um, well, I have been a Kirk Brownell. I'm Chris Garcia. I'm Megan Gailey. And remember, your kid will eventually resent you no matter what you do. So many-